Hello and welcome to another episode of NSC Finways powered by CNBC TV 18 season 2. This week we are in Gurgaon at the corporate office of Uninor. Uninor is a fully owned subsidiary of the Telenor Group, which is one of the largest integrated communications company in the world with headquarters in Oslo, Norway. Uninor's prepaid GSM mobile services are commercially available in the six circles of UP West, UP East, Bihar including Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and Gujarat. Together, these circles account for more than 50% of India's population, giving Uninor the ability to serve every second person in India. Uninor's three-pillar strategy of being the best in basic services, mass market distribution and low-cost operations has helped the company grow to the third or fourth position in customer market share. Focusing on our theme for the series, NSE Finviz visited Uninor in Gurgaon to gauge thoughts and notions of the young employees on investments and financial planning. Investment according to me is I think um, investing your money in something which you can use in future and by, by what uh, it gets increment by itself. Uh, definitely it is very difficult to read the changes in the market. The, the market is so volatile that it's very difficult to read it. I uh, definitely would like to know some tips how to read it and when and what to invest. I would love to speak to them about SIPs and stuff. Uh, because I've heard them, there are pretty good instruments to get into, though I haven't got into one. So I would love to speak about SIPs and stuff and how they work with uh, basis information or their past performance and how they see the market going forward because I believe that's slightly less riskier than getting into one particular stock. Currently I've invested in uh, you know LIC or some mutual funds basically the decisions are family decisions you know we take the guidance from our parents or friends and then uh, probably basis that we take the decisions. We're now joined by our two very special experts we have Hemant Rustagi who's the CEO at Wise Invest Advisors welcome to the show Hemant and we have Tanvir Alam who's the founder and CEO at Fincart Welcome to the show, Tanvir. Okay. Tanvir, you know, uh, we talk a lot about personal finance on the channel, people read it in the media, in newspapers, online, but it's still, India is still known as a country of savers rather than investors. Why is that? Okay, uh, what happened, we have been talking from the left brain side of our, of our understanding. Mm -hmm. And investor, when you buy any kind of a product, it's more towards right brain oriented. Okay, when you go to a shop, when you're buying is more emotional mm. than when you buy up when you and it's exactly similar for an investment product now what happens is the fear of loss of money gets basically triggered at the same part of the brain that deals with death and mortality mm. that deep seated is the fear and hence they need that amount of hand holding to overcome that fear to become investors from savers anything that is perceived to be safe a short return is taken as something safe and they will want to go ahead with it. Anything which is unsure, even hmm. if it's good, hmm. there will be a reluctance to buy. Okay. So, uh, you know, Himmat coming, adding on to that point is, uh, for example, a fixed deposit. It's very safe, you're happy, all right, after X, so many years, so many months, I'll get so certain percentage of money. I'm, it's a guaranteed return kind of, as opposed to maybe the stock mutual funds where it's very famously said mutual funds are subject to market risk, please read the documents before, carefully before investing. But why shouldn't I then? Why shouldn't I just put all my money in fixed deposits and sleep peacefully at night? Well, I think uh, fortunately or unfortunately that's what most of us do actually. If you really see in India, most of the people put money in a fixed deposit. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason for that is that we are looking at safety. Okay. Uh, the biggest risk that we consider okay. for our investment is that I should not lose a part of my capital. But we forget one very important risk, which is what we generally call a silent killer, which is inflation. Mm. Imagine if you are putting money aside for 20 years and your FD is giving you a return of 8% and the inflation also is at 8%. So at the end of 20 years, your money has grown in numbers, not in value. Mm. So I think it's very, very important for us to look beyond the risk of losing capital. It is very important risk. It's not a risk that you can avoid or mm. you should ignore because mm. at the end of the day we are talking about investing our hard-earned money. But in, remember that the risk of losing capital is valid only when you're investing for short term. When you're investing for short term for mm. a couple of years, mm -hmm. your focus has to be on not losing a part of your capital. But when you're investing for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, someone like you, for example, you want to start investing for your retirement planning okay or for children education you have 15 20 25 years to go there you need to make sure that you invest to beat inflation 
Mm. So consider both the risk. The moment you do that, you will start looking beyond your good old bank fixed deposits. I want to know about this, what is this e-gold e and how to invest in the e-gold and what is the right time to invest in the e-gold and what is the process? Uh, okay. So about e-gold, basically exactly. some clarity on what it is and all. Hemant, you'd like to take that? Yes. See, there are two ways of investing in gold. One is a gold old way of buying uh, physical gold. You can go and buy jewelry or you can buy gold biscuits, gold coins. But what typically happens over there, there are certain risks in that. One risk is obviously the risk of safety. The second is there is also a risk of uh, purity, mm -hmm. right? And if you, if you buy jewelry now and if you're not going to really consume it, use it, it goes out of fashion, then again you give it for remaking. There are a lot of making charges, a lot of expenses in that. If you like gold as an asset class, first thing you need to decide, why is that I want to buy gold? Am I buying gold because everyone else is, else is buying gold? Or am I buying gold because that is what I've learned over the years that gold is an asset class where I should put my money? So if, for example, gold can be a, a very good addition to the portfolio. Now, for example, we have a tradition of you know gifting gold in, in the wedding. So if you want to you know, accumulate that gold for a child wedding or any, any function in the family, you can do it systematically. Basically, what it means is that paper gold. You have these mutual funds today, okay, there are gold ETFs. You can invest directly in the gold ETF like you buy stock. There are also gold saving funds. So if you don't have a, a DMAT account, if you don't know how to you know, buy on the stock market, you can buy it through a gold saving fund, which typically invests in the same uh, ETF of, of the same mutual fund. So that is what happens here is that you can buy any quantity. You can buy a small quantity. You can buy you know, one gram of gold, which is equivalent to one unit. Now, obviously, you can't go to a jewelry shop and buy one gram of gold. So you can accumulate with a smaller sum. The second is what we have seen now is that the gold prices have become very, very volatile. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how do you benefit from that? You know, if you invest lump sum, and if the gold price crashes after that, you see a loss in the portfolio, which obviously is not going to make you happy. So the right way to accumulate is, you know, create a systematic investment plan for a gold saving fund, wherein you commit that a fixed amount will be invested every month. So you end up investing at different levels. But be very clear as to why you want gold. Don't buy gold just because that is what we have been doing for the years together. I have two children. One is six and one is one. Um, I would like to invest for them, the, uh, for their futures, for their studies uh, when they grow up. So there are a lot of child uh, plans available in the market. Do you think they are uh, good enough or there are other ways to uh, invest okay. for children? Tanvir, you'd like to think? Yeah. Are you referring to the insurance plans that you have? Yes. See, if in the, typically our insurance plans are ULIP plans. Okay, and I want to make you aware of the four charges which makes ULIP plan a little bit less, better investment option. And what are the four charges? Is one, you have a premium allocation charge which you get. Okay, the second charge that you have is a policy administration charge. The third charge you have is the insurance cover that they give to you, the mortality charge. And the fourth charge that they take is the fund management charge. Hmm. All this charge, when you add up, typically is, comes in the vicinity of about 8 to 10% on an average. Okay. So imagine somebody taking your 8 and 10% away of the money on a yearly basis from that investment. That's a risk here. Now when you compare to a mutual fund, the same quality of product with better transparency is available at 2.5%. So that makes a much better option than an ULA for a child plan. This is NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 season 2. It's time for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 season 2. My question is about uh, being investing into the real estate. Mm -hmm. More particularly, uh, I'm, I'm looking for an advice what you suggest, w whether it is better to invest in a residential property or a commercial property. Mm -hmm. Taking two assumptions. I am having a surplus money and I am not looking for my self-consumption. The basic objective is to gain out of it okay. and my risk appetite is good. So mm. now probably right. we all know about residential how much. Mm. Now if you advise for real estate, so since real estate market is also evolving with many kind of products like retail shops and the service apartments, mm. do you see there is, there is a scope and if about more evolving the thing, the service apartment. How do our economy see they being coming into the priority sooner? See, uh, real estate definitely is one of the options that all of us want to consider. In fact, if you really see uh, the investment pattern in India, a lot of our money, wherever it is possible, wherever we have that large chunk of money, 
the money goes into uh, real estate. Okay, thankfully, yes, as you rightly said, there are a lot of options that are coming up now. But I think I will say two, three things before I, I come back to your question. Uh, real estate definitely has a role to play. But I think what we need to understand is, are we investing too much money in real estate? There are certain issues with real estate. The issue is, we talked about certain goals, which we have to achieve five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years from now. The problem is, the biggest problem that we have in real estate is liquidity. Imagine, I need some money after 10 years and I have this property. I can't sell one room of it to get 10 lakh that I need. I will have to sell the entire property. At times, real estate can be pretty illiquid. And we've seen the trends, we've seen the trends, the prices keep moving. Okay, there are certain areas which look very good for investment. Suddenly some other new area gets developed. Everybody wants to buy there. Suddenly there are no takers for this. So you're, you're actually having a property. I think we have this fancy of buying things which we can touch and feel. Okay, so my view always is have a combination of all the asset classes. If it is for residential, definitely I think that has to be the first priority. If it is for investment, my advice to you would be, first you see whether you have sufficient money invested in the financial assets or not. The problem is, again, on the real estate is, imagine you actually make money 10 years from now, okay, it's a never-ending process. Uh, you make capital gains, either you pay tax on that, or you have to buy another property again. Mm -hmm. Okay, whereas in the financial asset, you make money. If you buy equities, for example, uh, after one year, there is no capital gain. Okay, you can take your money, walk out, do whatever you feel like with that money. What's your take on short-term parking of the fund? Uh, maybe uh, between the FD and the sh ultra short-term liquid funds or anything else between three to six months at a high tax income tax bracket of 30%. Mm -hmm. And second, what is your take on a three to five year horizon investment between share market and uh, real estate, especially mm -hmm. in the uh, NCR area? Okay. Tanvir, you want to take yeah. that? In fact, uh, put two questions you've got, one for the short term and one for the long term. Yes, See, from fixed deposit perspective uh, and liquid fund perspective, from tax angle, there is no difference as of now today. Okay, this budget. But having said that, a liquid fund still works out to be a better option because what happens if you take a very short term deposit and you need to pre mature it, you will get a tenure interest rate for that particular smaller tenure also. And some banks do levy up prepayment penalty charges. Whereas in a liquid fund, what happens, you get exactly for the number of days the return, which is far more better than one. The second, on the medium term horizon of about five years between real estate and your mutual fund, mm -hmm. I would still prefer mutual fund to real estate for a simple reason is if you look at a medium term mutual fund product, for example, a balanced fund for that, right, it will generate as good as a return like a real estate return for you, far more liquid, far more tax efficient. Like Raymond was pointed out, when you sell real estate, you'll have a long-term capital gains also. Here the long-term capital gains will be tax-free too. Raymond, so this, you know, holding in the equity markets, this happens a lot. People get really emotional when they hear the markets are up, the markets are down, and it's always that one friend you will always have who'll be like, markets here, it's reached its all times high, but now is the time, go buy, it's gonna go higher, and it doesn't. And that happens a lot. People start coming in into the market when it's nearing its peak. How do you control yourself? What is the way out from that to not get stuck into that trap? Well, I totally agree with you. I think unfortunately we start liking equity when we start doing very well. Hmm. We don't like a stock at 100. We like the stock at 500. <laughs> uh, but that's the typical uh, investor behavior. Hmm. Uh, that's oh, there is always a temptation. You know, first we want to convince ourselves that this what is happening is not real. Hmm. It's going to fall, and it does fall at times. So we say, look what I thought was right. So I, I know a bit about market, so I know when it is going to fall. Mm -hmm. It happens two, three times. Third time it doesn't happen. Fourth time it doesn't happen. And suddenly there is a panic. Mm -hmm. And then you don't want to miss out opportunity, then you end up buying at whatever price you think you are buying. Mm -hmm. the, the way to avoid that, like I said earlier, don't invest in stock or any asset class just because everyone else is doing it. Invest if you think you need to. Another issue, rather you could say with stocks or mutual funds is that you are able to track it day on day on day basis. You can track it five times, 20 times a day also. And real estate or other assets, like even a fixed deposit, you know it's there. I'll see it only after six months, six years, whatever, after a long period. While equity mutual funds you're seeing every day and you're like, oh, it's up 5%, should I sell, should I not sell? It's important to monitor your portfolio. It's important to in monitor your investments. But how often is too often? How often is a good ballpark uh, area to be monitoring your portfolio? My advice would be to the less you see the portfolio, the less blunder you will make. In fact, just to if, the, if this is some consolation, let me give you a 
example, people who actively monitor and people who actively watch the portfolio are, are make more mistakes that they make. Okay. So if you are watching a portfolio once in a quarter, once in a six month and rebalancing the asset allocation like the Thali has said on a yearly basis, I think that makes more sense. And just to avoid those behavioral mistakes, no? simple invest based on your objective. What I first answer the question, what I am saving for? What am I investing for? If my objective is children education, if the market goes from 28,000 to 20,000, has that objective changed? It's not changed. So you should be worried about the goal, not the market. You're watching NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18. It's time for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 season 2. My question is on the mutual fund versus real estate debate. Uh, I know many friends who have like more than one crore invested in property, but hardly one lakh or two lakh rupees in mutual funds. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, if you have less money than for mutual fund, but more than property. Mm -hmm. So why is it so? Is it more of a wrong perception or a reality? Are there certain tax implications? Why is it so? Your perception, anything that you feel in physical is that same. In fact, let me put differently. Now imagine a horror movie, okay, a scene. Typically it will be in dark, okay. Uh, you will find something uncertain out there, you don't know what's going to happen next, okay. Uh, the noise will be scarier. Now relate this to a happy incident, say a marriage in the family or a celebration. What will happen? The darkness comes into light, there are a lot of lights in celebration. The noise turns into music, rhythmic, okay. Because, and then there is certainty. Now you will have food and all. There is certainty in it. So whenever there is certainty, your perception is that this is safe, which may not be the case. Okay? So what has happened? Real estate has done well. I will not say. But having said that, what will happen? There are financial assets which have actually done much better. My question is to Hemant. Um, when should we ideally start our retirement planning and what should be the ideal amount we should be saving every month? Well, let me begin by saying that you need to start investing today, okay? It's never too early, never too late. Whenever we realize, it's, it's always bene beneficial to start early. Okay, there are many benefits of that. One, you get longer duration to build the corpus that you need to build. Now, for example, if you have 25, 30 years to go before you retire, you have that much more time to accumulate your corpus, which means that even with a smaller sum of money, if you invest in the right asset class, you'll actually build a huge corpus. Now the question is, how much should I invest? It's very, very difficult to ascertain today what my requirements are going to be 30 years from now. But you begin the process. Now I'll, let me give you an example. If your monthly expense today is, let's say, 25,000. If I look at inflation of, let's say, 8%, after 20 years, your expenses will become 1,16,000. Okay? Now, to generate that kind of money, you will need a corpus of 1 crore 80 lakhs. Now, your standard of living is not going to remain like this. As you grow in your career, you, okay, you move ahead from here, your expenses will go up. What typically happens when you retire, your expenses will come down by 20-30% because certain expenses that we incur when we are working will not be there. Okay? The important thing is have some ballpark figure to begin with. This is not the time that you will know exactly how much money. But like I said, the key factor is start investing today so that you have more time and invest through systematic investment plan in well diversified equity fund that is an asset class that will actually make good money for you so uh, himad before we end the show we've had a viewer who's written in with his question his name is rishi he's 37 years old and he stays in mumbai he says he's interested in investing in real estate and he wants to know the reits uh, he says are they a good option for retail investors what we have seen in india also is that when you want to buy a real estate you require a lump sum money Mm. And there, is, there are issues that we discuss about illiquidity, okay, to select which property to buy. Now, all of us want to participate in the real estate market with smaller sums of money. So how do you do that? You know, the, actually, SEBI has been debating about this for a long time, but finally they've issued the guidelines, they've allowed real estate investment trust to become a reality now. Therein, you can invest smaller sums of money, okay? Now, as of now, the, these are like a mutual fund where you buy kind of units, okay? And uh, this, these REITs basically invest in currently commercial properties. Okay. And there are certain rules and regulations that they have. 
which means that 80% of the money has to be invested in the properties which are ready. 20 can be under construction. 90% of the money that they generate as income, half yearly has to be distributed as income to you. I think it's a, it's a great option. Okay. I think it, it, it will evolve over a period of time, but I think it's a, it's a great beginning. Thank you so much, Hemant. Thank you so much, Tanveer. And thank you so much for having us here. Thank you. I suppose in Gurgaon, especially the youngsters, earn good amount of money, but they don't have the uh, time and knowledge in the investment area. So this will give a good exposure to them and where to invest, what are the areas. And so I think uh, this will give them really some interest areas where they can do the investments. I think I'm taking that advice that uh, finish off your loans, especially the personal and the car loan person, and start thinking of investing. So I'm taking that advice. And secondly, uh, I think mutual funds uh, are something I'm going to really look forward now to invest. There are a few key very thing, new things which I learned from this forum. Uh, one being about the investments in e-gold. Uh, that was something which I was not really subjected to and um, I, you know, I will explore those things right up now. Um, the panel was very, very, you know, supportive in answering questions. So it was really good. It was, it was very nice. The session was very, very informative. Um, I will be able to plan my finances better and uh, I will be able to invest in a very disciplined manner now. Well, that's all on this episode of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. If you have any questions for our experts, please feel free to email us at fwq at network18online.com. Until next week from the entire team, many thanks for watching.